What is good? We're back. We got round two of the Industry Dynasty Superflex Tight End Premium Mock. Round one was a lot of fun. If you haven't seen that, check that out. Um, but same style, same deal. We got 11 different analysts, a bunch of big names. Uh, learned a lot, had a lot of fun, a lot of good discussion, answered a lot of questions. Uh, if there's something you want to know about any of these rookies, this is the series to catch it on because we got a le- we have 12 different opinions going at each other one-on-one though we didn't just throw 12 people in a room because that wouldn't accomplish nothing instead we went to we went to work for you we had 11 different guests on we recorded like every night for two weeks and knocked these boys out and got everyone's opinion so listen to what they have to say listen to what we have to say and decide for yourself baby that's what this is all about make the decision for yourself we're educating you and now you're educated check these drafts out it's great it's all for your pleasure. Roll it. All right, we're back with Ryan McDowell leading us off in the second round. Uh, what are you thinking here, man? What you got? Yeah, you know, I, I uh, was looking at those wide receivers come off the board late in the first round. We saw Olave and Dotson and, and Christian Watson, and uh, I was pretty sure I was just going to take the one that was left, and, and that's the case here. Uh, I'm taking George Pickens here, 2.01, Pittsburgh Steelers wide receiver. I, I put him right in that same mix with, with those other receivers I just mentioned. Yeah. Wouldn't have any problem at all drafting him in the late first round, uh, maybe even ahead of a couple of those guys that were already picked. So really love the value. You know, I, I certainly feel confident about the Steelers' track record uh, of choosing wide receivers in that day two range. They've They've been so successful at, at finding uh, finding guys like that. And, you know, we're already hearing now basically a year out that they they might let Deontay Johnson walk. Um, right. We we heard some earlier trade rumors involving Chase Claypool. And I don't think both of those guys are likely to be gone next year. Uh, but I think there's a decent chance at least one of them is. And that uh, obviously leaves some some big opportunity for Pickens. Yeah, I agree. We both Jason and I really like like the talent and what could be for picking. So if, if we're stabbing at the end of the first round for upside, he's one of my favorite stabs to take. Like I, we would, I think I would probably still take him over Christian Watson. I got Christian Watson pushed back yeah. uh, a little further than most. I can't be mad if you want to take Christian Watson. I'm no, I'm not going to argue him over, with you. Definitely got to take him over James Cook. You know, I feel like maybe not definitely, but me personally, I'm not even really I'm with thinking you. about yeah. Cook. You know, I want to, I want to. I like. I would like to switch Cook and Pickens almost in this draft. Although, yeah, I could. I could see. Take. You know, I'm. I'm not gonna be mad. You want to take Olave, and I, I probably would take Dotson over Pickens, but I don't know. You know, Dotson feels safer. You don't get a great feeling with Pickens necessarily off the field. You know, because for sure he's. You know, you saw that weird draft video where he's like, you know, and and there's like some other question marks. And, and some rumors that, that, you know, may or may not be true. Probably not. But, uh, you know, and then there's the injuries and not a ton of production. You know, you can't point to a lot of things. But when he's on the field and healthy, he is a dominant force to be reckoned with. You know, and he carries himself like he is the man. And if he could stay healthy and the Steelers are a good organization, they notoriously knock it out of the park with their wide receiver picks. It's just – what are we doing here? You know, are we are we taking a little bit of a gamble? Are we gambling on upside? Do you feel like getting frisky? You know, that's kind of where I got to go with George Pickens. Yeah, that that really is the question. Um, and and I, I'm with you. You know, I was I was worried leading up to the NFL draft. I heard a lot of those same things, and and was worried that he would fall. Um, and he did a little, honestly, a lot further. Th- yeah, he he fell. I, I think he fell compared to what. Uh, what we some expected. people mocked him to the Packers in the first round, which I was like, oh right. my gosh, if he goes to the Packers yeah. in the first round, I'm gonna lose my mind. But yeah, yeah, the value would have been crazy then. But um, it, you're right though, and it, it's an interesting comparison with Dotson because the um, the the style of play that they have, um, and, and of course the draft capital that we we saw with Jahan Dotson, it really does feel like polar opposites there as far as a super safe prospect. Yeah. Uh, versus 
this guy that we're seeing lots of red flags with. Obviously, the injury things uh, that we all know about, but then uh, some of these off-field whispers and, and things that, like you said, maybe are true, maybe not. We really don't know. Um, kind of a diva attitude type player, and uh, that's – you know, that's not always a bad thing. I mean, we've no. seen obviously plenty of those succeed, especially at the wide receiver position. <laughs> um, but there's there's things to worry about with George Pickens. He is he is not a not a slam dunk no. uh, player, but the, the upside is is certainly exciting, yeah. especially in the second round. Rolling up your sleeves, tightening them, those batting gloves up a million times and then just swinging like a, a who is that guy that I, can't, I, I need that. The, like the, the, was the, the, I don't know about the it, bigger guy that yeah. played for the the bigger guy that played for the uh, Chicago Cubs and he would just Frank swing. Thomas no uh, he had like long hair and he was like overweight like fat like and and, and and would I just just I want to say it's like Price or something would just swing for the fences on every single one. it was either a, a, <laughs> a it was either a strikeout or a home run he was playing modern day baseball or back average, in the day yeah. <laughs> Oh, that sounds like John Crook. Is that who you're thinking of? Maybe, man. I should. I should. I, was, I need to. That get... would have been. Well, did he play for the White? I guess. Yeah, he went from the Phillies uh, to. Yeah, I don't know. I think Phillies with him. Yeah. Um, all right. So if Pickens was on the clock at two one, or I mean, sorry, if if Pickett was on the clock at two one, would that? Let's say Pickens and and Pickett are there. Is that? <sighs> Yeah, you know, honestly, I think I have them ranked right right beside each okay. other. And, and again, it, it kind of feels like a case of upside versus uh, limited upside, at least in my opinion. <laughs> sure. I, I think in, in the second round, you probably have to go quarterback there yeah. in, in with these settings. So I, I'd probably go pick it, but same, same tier for me. All right, George Pickens 2-1 for Ryan McDowell. Love it. All right, back on the clock at 2-2, we got Troy King. You can find him at T King mode again, the contributor for uh, Yahoo and the football guys back on the clock here. You had Drake London with the first pick. We got two, two here. Some, some fun talent left on the board here. So who, who are you going to go with, man? This was much tougher than my last pick. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of good options. I like in the second round, but I decided to go Rashad white. And the reason why I went Rashad white is for a couple of reasons, right? Mm-hmm. It's because, He's obviously going to the Bucks offense with Tom Brady and, you know, for however long he's going to be the, you know, quarterback. But right now they're missing, they were missing that reliable pass catching option or reliable option behind Leonard Fournette. We already know what happened with Ronald Jones. He was not a good pass catcher. He's just really unreliable. We get benched a lot. So we saw that experiment and you know what? And Keyshawn, it's our, and Who's the other running back? I'm blanking right now. The, uh, no, Gio. Yeah, Keyshawn but Vaughn. The, the, yeah, Keyshawn Vaughn. Yeah, Keyshawn Vaughn. That experiment didn't work either. So even Le'Veon Bell for like two seconds. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just like, but yeah. So we saw what the they tried to do. No one was, you know, like Lenny, but Rashad White. He could not only is he a good at rushing the ball, but he's also good at passing. So I'm expecting him to be for lack of a better term, the James White of this offense for Tom Brady. I believe he's going to – and I feel like Lenny's still going to get his you know, his catches and he's still going to be the RB1, but I'm thinking about the future beyond that, right? If Rashad White does his thing or he's extremely efficient or he just looks good, they could you know, move on from Lenny. I don't have his contract, but I believe you know, within the next year or two, they can move on from Lenny, and he's an older running back anyway. You got this guy, Rashad White, if he's – capable again if he looks good he rushes the ball and he can catch he might be the running back of the future for them so those are a couple and again it's just a high powered offense so and also you know lenny has had his issues with injury so yeah. who's gonna be the backup rashad white so for me I, I like the upside of being in that offense so give me white here yeah lenny's got uh he signed a three-year deal but he's got a after two there is an out so uh, you know, they could get out of, I think he'll be 29 when they could potentially get out of Leonard Fournette. And, um, you know, he's had not only uh, injury issues, as some maybe some want-to issues, you know. Seems like yeah. he figured it out with Tom and in and, and Tampa of, of really wanting to be great. But uh, we've seen some, some lack of effort sometimes from Lenny in the past. Uh, so 
interesting that Rashad White was there. I felt like in this draft that maybe somebody else would have would have probably snagged him up. I thought so too. Um, I was very surprised that he fell to two two, and I was like, "Hey, I'll take that all day." Yeah. <laughs> um, was it? Was there anybody else in consideration there? No, no Malik or Ritter or David oh, Bell in there. Not. No, no, because. Here's the thing, right? Mm-hmm. So I guess going to I'll, I'll talk about all of them, right? So let's start off with Ritter. For and there's a lot of Ritter truthers who believe that he could be starting Week One. Mm-hmm. And you know Mariota, we've seen him in the NFL, we've seen him back up, we saw him with the Titans. But for me, I feel like it's asking a lot for Ritter to just come in and start Week One. Mariota, for him to even sniff the field this season, Mariota would have to just be extremely bad, right? I'm not ex- expecting the Falcons to be great. But I feel like a lot would have to go wrong for them to just give the keys to Ritter. And it's the draft capital, right? They spend a third round pick on him. That doesn't guarantee you anything. So that's the reasons why I did not pick Ritter. And again, if he sucks, he's just going to be a backup and they might and they might draft somebody next year. So I feel like I'm a little off on Ritter. Malik. Similar situation. The only, the thing about Malik, I would probably be leaning more towards Malik than Ritter, solely because Ryan Tannehill after next year he's gone. Like they're not going to keep him for another year. So if Malik looks good in practice, or he's the QB that if he develops the way he needs to develop, then he could be the starter. Or there could be another situation where they get another QB in 2023. I have no idea. Sure. So, and it all depends on how these guys, you know, look throughout the year. But to me, especially in these rookie drafts, like if it's the only, the only QB I would really be trying to target is Kenny Pickett, right? Unless like, again, these guys fall. Like, again, if this was like the late second, I'd be looking more at Ritter and Malik yeah. and then Corral. I probably look at like early third, but um, those are my takes on them. David Bell, I do like David Bell. I do like his landing spot with Cleveland, obviously with Deshaun Watson. It's it's going to be a good offense, and you know, obviously people could hate on his forty time and call him slow, whatever. But he was a he was a solid prospect, so I I think that he was also a good option. It's just I don't know for me, like you know, I got London. I want a running back, and I feel like. Rashad White's value there at two two was just too good to pass up. I like David Bell too, but I had yeah. to go Rashad White here. Yeah, I mean, I haven't. I mean, I like the the value talk there. I haven't, you know, seen too many drafts so far where David Bell's gone in the first round. Probably none, and, and plenty where Rashad White has gone in the first yeah. round. So there's at least probably a little bit more built in value with Rashad White in, in a lot of leagues. Uh, so, all right, man, two two, Rashad White. All right, we got John Bauer of the Dynasty Theory uh, pod back on the clock at 2-3. Your first selection was Traylon Burks. What are you doing at 2-3 here? I keep going back and forth on my phone because I'm looking at what I did in this mock versus what I did with you guys in our other mock. Mm-hmm. And Nobody remembers or cares, you know, just for the re- – you, you don't even have to <laughs> No, 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 no. But, but I want to see – for this is for sure. me because I'm, I'm psychotic. I'm, yeah. I'm crazy. I love though. it. Yeah. I wanted to see how consistent I was, and I landed David Bell at the 205 in that one. So I'm taking David Bell 203 here. Uh, my my worry from a short-term perspective is what happens with Deshaun Watson. There's mm-hmm. a lot of question marks there. We still don't know. We don't have clarity. But He despite, can't be playing the whole year. You just, yeah, just go this, ahead and reserve that. There's no way. I can't see him not getting at least half the year. It feels like maybe they even drop a bomb and go even bigger than that, you know? Well, we have people coming out. I think it was, uh, oh, my gosh, Josina Anderson uh, kind of talking about the Trevor Bauer situation in baseball, and he got two years. So it's like, do they really drop the hammer? So we'll see with that. But David Bell, I know the speed was a concern. The the, uh, combine may have knocked his draft capital down a little bit, but third-run draft capital, still happy with it, not thrilled, but happy with it. I can live with that late-day two capital. And I think he is going to surprise some people. That kind of an open situation. I know people mm-hmm. are excited about David and Joku with that tight end room opening up a little bit. But now you have Amari Cooper, who he's been dinged up every once in a while through his career. Sure. But I, I love Amari too. You have Donovan Peoples Jones. What's he going to look like? What's his role going to be? Uh, and Anthony Schwartz, the speedster. But how involved is he going to be? I think David Bell could provide that that safety valve there. 
But you, you take a player like David Bell, it's not necessarily for that year one impact. I do think he's going to grow. I think he's going to be a, a solid pro. And in the 203, there's, there's a lot of things with his profile that I like a lot more than the guys that are going around him. So David Bell, 203, locked and loaded. Yeah, I mean, I, I really like the pick. I don't really I have it. I don't really have too much to too much to add there, and I'm, you know, pretty. I guess I shouldn't be all that surprised, but it seems like you know this has pretty much been David Bell territory. He hasn't been slipping too far in any of the drafts that well, that I've been in. Strong so. landing spot, you know, and 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 third round isn't a death sentence from a draft capital standpoint, correct? Like, do you yep. do you happen to have the percentages of like what the hit rate is for a rookie wide receiver? Coming out of the third round versus the fourth round, is it? So third versus fourth, it's pretty drastic, but it's still even a little separation between second and third. And I pulled all this information in our uh, Dynasty Theory Discord, and I wish I had it readily available, but yeah. um, second to third, a little bit of a gap. Third to fourth, it starts to really deteriorate. And then you have guys like Amon Ross St. Brown, who had the fourth round draft capital, right. that is going to skew that a little bit here. But It does happen, right? Fourth it, round guys can do well, but it's it's the percentage is small, but you know, some guys act like the percentage is zero and it's like why even take a why even make the pick, you know? If you that's, that's it. What, just, just because it might be a 20 25% chance doesn't mean like exactly it, it there is still a chance that something is going to happen. It's not 100% or 0%. So th- these guys that might have a lower percentage of hitting for one reason or another, they still creep in from time to time mm-hmm. and nothing is a hundred percent. Whether it's, you want to look at film or analytics, whatever the case may be, but yeah, you get in the fourth round, it still gets a little sketchy, but uh, yeah, it still happens. So all the quarterbacks available, Sands, Kenny Pickett, no chance of taking a quarterback there. I went through my shares. I don't know if, if you guys use dynasty planet and uh-huh. it, it shows you, your roster ship percentage where you have them uh and it's good during the season too but anyway yeah. uh that's enough for that free plug uh i don't have any malik willis i don't have any desmond ritter i have one sam howe share that i got pre-nfl draft and i don't believe i, I think i have one matt corral that was in a Devi league mm-hmm. like people are still spending first round picks on malik willis and at this point, I, I know, again, I know you could look at it and say, well, Russell Wilson was a third round pick. Sure. And Russell Wilson is not the norm. And Malik right. Willis, he is not Russell Wilson. So I, I, I think people that are spending those early picks on a Malik Willis, mostly him, and then Ritter sneaking in every once in a while, I think people are lighting those picks on fire. So where where would where would be okay in the second round? If you what pick in the second would make you say if they're still around that I, I might pull the trigger? Once we get to about that 209 range, 209, 210. So, but at that point, they're off the board. Right. So it's like yeah. Kenneth Walker. Oh, yeah, I would take him at 105. Well, he's never there at 105. So it's kind of a moot point. Right. How much higher would you take David Bell? Would you take him over Rashad White? Yes. And I have. George Pickens? Yes. And I have. All right. Christian Watson? I haven't had to do it. That's okay. the thing. Watson, or how about James Cook? I don't know where you stand on that. We don't need to get into it, but I, I have them in the same tier to be like once you. And that's why everything I've been doing leading up to the draft has been moving up from 109, 110, 111, 112 to try to get to the top eight, because I think once you leave that top eight, you get question marks. Could these guys hit? Absolutely. But it's something I don't want to bet on. And that's why if I have 109, I'd rather get like 202 and 203 and get two, two shots, shots as opposed yeah. to just that one exactly. Gotcha. All right. All right. We're on to pick two, four. No Casey. Got some technical difficulties, but we're here with Michael Bauer of uh, Dynasty Rewind Podcast. Make sure you check that out at Dynasty Rewind. Check Michael Bauer out at Dy- uh, Rewind CEO on the Twitters for your pleasure. Uh, who do you got at two, four? So I went with Desmond Ritter. Outside of Kenny Pickett, he's really the only quarterback that I'm interested in this high. And this day, Malik Willis has the upside. Matt Corral, all he has to do is beat out Sam Darnold. I like Desmond Ritter. 
I didn't at first, and then I watched more film. He's actually pretty athletic. Yes, I understand he's really inconsistent, but he's not going to have to start right away. So I'm okay with waiting a little bit. And just looking at the way that the draft fell around me, to be fair, if this was a real draft, I would have probably traded back because I didn't like the way some of the values were aligning here, but that's not pr- the purpose of this exercise. This is a mock draft. You uh, you take what you have. So I had right. the 2-4, and I went with Desmond Ritter. And I think, you know, if you look at what the Atlanta Falcons are doing, I think they're building a nice core with him, Drake London, you got Kyle Pitts. Once they get a solid running back, you know, they'll be really good. Um, but I like Ritter. I think he went to a good spot, and it's – I think you're going to start to see the NFL go back to let's not force these guys to play day one as far as quarterbacks go. And I think really that's the way to go. I don't know what you feel about that. I know that everybody wants the new flashy guy to come in and play, but sometimes these guys, they just need a year to sit. I, I would agree for the most part, you know, especially with, with Willis, um, which I'm, I'm a little curious why Ritter over Willis, I guess, if you, if you got a quick answer to that one. Sure. And that's, you know, one of the things that I'm really trying to do this, this go around with the the rookies, especially is I'm trying to really refine my process in the sense that I have to understand just because I don't like a guy as much, I have to take into consideration his opportunity. Who do you think is easier to beat out? Marcus Mariota, who is better now than when he was in Tennessee. I think I'll say that. Or Ryan Tannehill. Yeah, I mean, I hear you. I, I, I obviously, I mean, I think to your point about not forcing Desmond Ritter, you know, to play year one. I think he's gonna play at some point because Mariota is can't stay healthy, right? He very just, well could. He just can't stay healthy. That's Absolutely. why he is to where he is in his this point in his career, and probably why the Falcons were willing to take a shot on Ritter when he fell to the third round, which everyone hates. You know, no third round quarterback could ever be any good. It can um, happen. There's like four of them, you know, so <laughs> it can happen, right? So, was it? and we're all about finding outliers here. You know, I'm I, I'm almost want to change our dang name to to uh, outlier the outliers, but so I can definitely see Ritter hitting the field. Um, I think with Malik Willis, you know, you're not banking on him beating out Ryan Tannehill. I don't think, but Tannehill they could cut loose after a year, and and Willis should sit. I think you know there were some high profile, you know. I think it was uh, Trey, uh, Mc, Todd Mc, McShay that was like, he's got to start year one so he can get this experience. And that was back when he was a first round pick and the first wide receiver off, or quarterback off the board and all that. Um, I, I'm, I'm fine with Willis sitting behind Tannehill, being at a good organization. I think if I was going to take a quarterback in the second round, you know, after Kenny Pickett, Willis would be my pick. Um, I, you know, you want to take your shot at Ritter. You like Ritter. You watch the tape. You know he does have he does show some good things. Um, he is athletic. He can run, and and he's going to get some opportunity. I just feel like he's definitely going to see the field at some point this year. And shit, Mariota might not even make it through training camp. So you can see That's Ritter possibility quicker than any. You can see Ritter being the first rookie wide rookie quarterback starting. You know, uh, start a game this year. So I think he, you're going to get to see Ritter early on. Um, you know, I do think uh, the the upside with Willis might be. A little bit better, and, and and I like him being able to wait. I like because because they can get out of Tannehill next year, you know, with like hardly any cap, you know, um, implications. Like they can they can cut him loose and, and move on if they feel so inclined. And and Willis fell to them at, at, in the third round, and they were like, "Well, shit, that wasn't in their plans." But they're like, "If you're gonna let me get this man in the third round, I can see why they took him." But um, you know, were there were there any other players that came into consideration for you at two four? Um, Zamir White was a guy that I had thought about. Uh, there's a couple other guys. I thought I thought about Isaiah Spiller. I thought it was a little too early for Isaiah Spiller. Um, I was kind of hoping that like George Pickens or David Bell would fall to me, which they did not. Uh, Rashad White I would have been fine with too. John Mechie's a guy I like, but I felt that like it was a little too early. Him and Alec Pierce I like a lot. But again, I feel it's a little too early. So this is another point where I say I would have tried to trade back right? if yep. this was a real draft because seeing the way that the rest of the draft went, I could have gotten guys that I loved, liked more and maybe picked up a little bit more draft capital. If not this year, then next. So there's other guys here. Um, you know, and if Ritter hits, you know, if, if he shows, if he flashes a little bit, you'll be able to get a return on your investment, I think. And, and this is super flex. So you know, I'm not. I'm not in camp. Where you know, here, here at the FF Dynasty, we're not in camp. You can't take 
one of these third or fourth round quarterbacks in the second round. Like you want to take your shot at one of these guys, go for it. Um, yeah. Can't be too mad at the pick. Like I said, probably would probably would slide Willis in there uh, over Ritter. But you know, you do you, man. Um, I think we'll just we'll move to the next pick. All right, Garrett Price back on the clock at two five, holding it down for the Dynasty nerds. You can find him at Dynasty Price on Twitter. Uh, I know this pick's a little spicy because I can see it in front of me, and I will say we've had most of the other people on here, and everybody hates you. So <laughs> they don't hate you; they just hate this pick. <laughs> you know what? I get it. I get it. Uh, for the most part, I have not had to take Zamir White this early. So two five uh, is Zamir White, and we have tried to defend yeah. you. It was like you know he could he just he might be planting his flag. He went pretty hard in the paint right. when we had him on the show. He really loves Zamir. You're not going to get a chance. No. Probably you might could have got him at three five, depending mm. based on what everybody else has been saying in this particular mock. But in general, probably not. So Zamir White, you, you pulled the trigger at two five. Yeah, and that's exactly what it was. Knowing that I'm not going to be able to move around in this draft like I would in real life, uh, I haven't actually had to take him uh, a he- earlier than like 210. I think 210 is the earliest that I've taken him in any draft thus far. Uh, but for me, it's 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 all about the upside here. And I think Zamir White, out of any of these running backs, long term has just as good of upside as anyone not named Kenneth Walker or Brees Hall. Uh, the reason being, I don't know how 2022 is going to work out. We know that anytime that there's a new coaching staff in, they want to get their guys. Uh, so as much as I think Josh Jacobs has been undervalued for almost the entirety of his career, sure. it's, you know, we, we don't know what fantasy, Josh McDaniels yeah. feels about him. Yeah. So, so they, they, they got their guy. They, they took Zamir white here. And then on top of that, they decided not to go with Josh Jacobs' fifth-year option. So next season, there's nobody. I mean, the the ghost of Kenyon Drake is there, I guess. But, like, there, there's really – there's no one there to compete for touches. Could they draft somebody? Absolutely. They definitely could. Uh, and that could make it interesting and whatnot. But right now, if I'm going to look at a guy that I think next year has a good chance to be the lead back, and a Josh McDaniels offense where we've seen guys, even if they're not the sole back, the lead back has always been great. You know, thinking about guys like LeGarrette Blunt and his 18 touchdown season and uh, the pass catchers that have done really well there. So he's going to yeah. fit into a role. I don't know that he's going to be the pass catcher, but I think he would be more of the LeGarrette Blunt type. And I could easily see him getting, you know, 250 touches or so next season and, and being the lead back. Okay. All right. Well, I'll, I'll accept that answer. Um, I'll pass it on to everybody else. Um, so if you if you were able to move around and say hop yeah. back in and make sure you could get Zamir White, what would be who, what would be the other kind of player that you were like, I don't really want to pass up uh, here? I almost took Damian Pierce. Uh, Damian Pierce, I think, is kind of the opposite of Zamir White, where Uh, I don't know that he's a guy that I think is going to have a crazy long career, but I think we could see Jordan Howard 2.0 here where he there's really nobody else there. And so he's going to get a bunch of touches in Houston early on. But I don't know that he's this phenomenal athlete that's going to have a long career. So I think it's going to be a good rookie season, decent second year, and then it starts to kind of fade away after that. So Damian Pierce was interesting just because the early return that you can get on a running back sure. is always valuable. So if I was able to move around, I probably would have taken Damian Pierce, traded back up to the end of the second round, and then nab Zamir White. Right. Yeah, because by the time you get to the end of the second round, early third, like the the doesn't seem like the price tag is too steep in this particular draft. People are just looking no. to maybe see if they can cash in, get something else, and not have to make a decision. So Zamir White, 2-5 exactly. for... Uh, Garrett here and the contingency plan, if able to move around like a normal mock, would have been Damian Pierce. Yep, absolutely. And and the last piece of it for me is Zamir White, I think, is has been an underrated talent this entire time. Sure. So, you know, when I'm banking on the player as well, player that I really like pre-draft, my RB4 pre-draft, that, that weighs into this as well. Yeah, I disagree with the narrative that he can't break tackles and that he'll never be able to catch a single ball ever. And you can watch a tape and you can see him breaking tackles and you can even see a few catches where he uses his hands sure. and he actually catches the ball. They didn't fucking throw it to him. They had James Cook, you know, it's just... 
I just don't like those narratives. You know, I'm with you. I like the player. I really like the talent. Uh, it's a good pick. You well, just can't take him at two five. What are you thinking? Probably can't take him at two five. <laughs> what an but, idiot! You know. Idiot! <laughs> Unfollow. <laughs> Thumbs down uh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. We're getting some I, I was making comments. sure I was going to get to talk to talk about him. I There's no it. way that I was going to leave this I and not going to talk about Zamir. So I was like, well, 2-5, here it is. Yeah. All right. We got our guy Angelo back on the clock here at 2-6. Uh, you can find his work at angeloanalysis.com and, of course, on Twitter, um, Angelo underscore fantasy. Strong Twitter follow. Check yeah. him out. Very good. Uh, if you didn't do it the first time, do it this time. Uh, so you're on the clock at two six. What you got, bud? Man, I think this, this one was a auto layup. pick for me, yeah. man. Layup, Malik Willis. I think for me, when I looked at my my talent tiers on AGS and the, and the Ascension Draft Guide, it was Malik Willis. I think I had him in the back end of the first round in terms of talent. I actually I had him at what I did as he did like one oh one to like the end of the like fourth or fifth round in terms of talent tiers. And he was in the middle of the first round in terms of talent. Like, that's how much talent Malik Willis has. Will he see the field is the question. And in the middle of the second round, I'm going to bet on that all day. Because if he does, it's not really going to hurt my roster any. But if he does, I might have a perennial top five quarterback. Yeah. In or fantasy. at least even a quarterback for a shot at a, at a top 10 season. One exactly. Because, like, we're talking like a guy like Jalen Hurts. Right. That's probably his most comparable when I – when I started my QB model, it was just Jalen Hurts and Justin Herbert were the two he kind of compared to in terms of fantasy. Not bad for yeah. a guy he might be bidding at 2 6. Right. So when I look at that and look at the rushing upside, look at the fact that the Titans traded up for him. No, he didn't get the capital, but you know, the Titans were a bit aggressive in terms of we got it, we should probably get him because we could potentially see him as Ryan Tannehill's successor. Yeah. And Tannehill's probably going to be out next year yeah. you know he's probably not, he's going to be a free agent um and you know if he has the same year he had last year i don't think there's a chance they resign him so um i think bulls will get a chance to start as early as 2023 so uh, if he does i mean he's a plug and play every week as soon as he hits the field i mean you're looking at a guy who could he could have a qb1 finish any week right um because he's he's gonna walk into the nfl as the second best rushing quarterback behind lamar jackson and that means a lot when sure. you know, your rushing ceiling is 850 yards. Right. Well, we don't I mean, have to love big, you as a big NFL quarterback, you know, as, as what you can do on the field necessarily. But fantasy wise, it doesn't matter. You know what I mean? Right. 100 percent. 100 percent. We've we've all talked a lot about Ryan Tannehill potentially being out. It is 18 million dead. They'd have to eat if they were to cut him next year. Um, right. So, and they and then nine point two the year after that. So it is. And he and he. He didn't have Derrick Henry for chunks of the season. Didn't have A.J. Brown for chunks of the season. They still were the first overall seed in the AFC. So it's not like Ryan Tannehill is the worst. I don't know that we can necessarily just pencil in uh, Willis in 23, but there's definitely a decent chance. And maybe maybe that would be good for him to sit for more than one year, too. I agree, actually. I think, you know, when I, when I watched Malik Willis play, I mean, obviously I think he, he was the – you could call him the tools, the quarterback in this class – um, just as he has a pretty rare combination of of runner thrower and tantalizing. that and that's one of the yeah it's a good word actually um, and he's one of those prospects that he coordinators and GMs and coaches might like salivate yeah I mean he's gonna he's gonna give you headaches too defensively so right. it's like why not take that shot um, if he picks up the offense quickly he can show he can you know he can take over games like. And I think, too, he adds a different element to that Titans offense that they were missing. And the number one – I think it's probably the number one reason I think he's the most interesting at this point in the draft is the Titans know they're going to need something else to get past Kansas City Chiefs of the world, the Buffalo Bills of the world, right? Right. Those are the, kind of the two juggernauts in the AFC. They're going to need something else probably other than Ryan you know, to win those games. Um, and I think, you know, they – they might think it's Malik Willis. We don't know the answer to that, right. but um, it very well could be. And if it is, you know, you're getting, like I said, a potential perennial top five quarterback option yeah, at 2-6. You, you know the Titans aren't scared to do do shit differently than the norm either. So, right. you know, 
they can they'll muddy it up and so you're you're looking at it as you know some of the guys in this draft I'm sure we're, are looking at this as there's no way I'm taking Malik Willis at a, at anywhere in the second round unless it's super late because of the, the third percentage round draft capital. capital but you're looking at it as hey I scored this guy from a talent perspective so for me I'm looking at this I'm not it's obviously not a positive but it's a positive for that you may be able to acquire some more Malik Willis at, and you're not you know middle of the second you're not upset that right, upset no. if the player doesn't hit like good luck right uh, right and then all your seconds right all right man i like it i, like I do it. too yeah i'm i threw some shade at him maybe being there next year but i, I like that pick I'm, I'm down with that pick for sure all right so back on the clock here we got at devi underscore kane at the devi marketplace kane uh, sell. good to see you again your buddy pleasure. feels like it was just a second ago <laughs> uh, i just have so one of two- those voices <laughs> right at uh at two seven what you got i uh, so i'm gonna like preface this with i also hate this pick and i hate that i made it <laughs> but i right? thought you loved like, this i thought you loved I this thought you nailed all these picks i did I, <laughs> okay I there's did. a caveat right. <laughs> this was just the best pick remaining right mm-hmm. but like i don't it's like that value you were talking pick. about with the last pick yeah. yeah i don't like that i was the one that had to make this pick right mm, um, so, gotcha. so it's damian pierce the running back going to the houston texans now i realized that he was drafted you know at pick 107 like he is fine he didn't really have a ton of production at florida that's because um florida has a terrible coach or at least did have a terrible coach in, in mm-hmm. mullen um he gone. and urban meyer yeah. a long time ago well, Although at least they won. Some natties, but he sucks. I hate Urban Meyer. Fuck yeah, like Urban Wolf, Ur- 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 He's something else. He's probably out <laughs> dancing right now, so it's no big deal. He's not listening. Yeah, um, yeah. with his wife but, in the uh, other room. <laughs> yeah. So th- the reason why I took Pierce is is you know it's all about trying to get a value gain, and I think if you look at the other running backs that are on the roster for the Houston Texans, um. I wouldn't say they inspire a ton of confidence, mm-hmm. right? Great um, so it's Mar- Marlon Mack and Rex Burkhead. Mm-hmm. Now, realistically, I would probably have tried to trade this pick and see if I could get a 23 second or, or something like that, right? Um, mm-hmm. But I think Damian Pierce, you're going to have enough come out about him, you know, in training camp and all this stuff that like he's going to vault in value enough where some people are going to think that he's a starting running back for Houston. And whether I believe he's a starting running back for Houston is irrelevant. Right. But if someone's going to if someone's going to pay like he's the starting running back in Houston, then it matters. Right. So I think that's the safest pick at this spot, because realistically, we're just trying to get some sort of value. Right. Um, and like Damian Pierce is going to bring some value, right? It, whether he has a 12 touch game, whether uh, there's some report that comes out ahead of time that that he could be the starter in Houston, any one of those things. Right. But I think back of your mind, you're like eh, the 2023 class is really, really good and has some really, really good running back. So maybe he could play for a year. Right. Yeah. And be usurped and, by a higher pick. Yeah. So like, I'm totally fine Michael with Carter. That. Yeah, like right. I'm totally fine with Damian Pierce for for the year, but like yeah. I'd rather move him as soon as we get some good news and, and kind of yeah. play it as safe as possible. So I think that value thing again for you, like it's already, um, you know, we talk about a lot that you kind of nailed it with. It doesn't really matter what you think, but the public, matter. the public is dr- such a driving force and the public is already really behind Damian Pierce. The public yeah. seems to love Damian Pierce. And at the same time, you're getting plenty of fantasy analysts who are mad that Damian Pierce is going as high as he is. And they're saying, you can't take this guy that high. And the public's taking him that high. So I think you're, I think you're spot on uh, with saying if, if you're gathering uh, your chips to make a push, I think that's, I think that's a solid chip to, to, to grab because it, whether you like him or not, you, you don't have to love the guy, which you clearly basically said that you're not a huge fan. Uh, but I, I think you're, I think you're right on You're you're sniffing the right trail there. Yeah. Two, eight. We're back up. What are you going to do case? You going to take your boy, our boy. So this was at two, eight here. This was uh this was a tough one. I had it's tight end premium. So they brought <laughs> McBride's on the board for me there for sure. Mechie was on the board. Pierce is on the board. I like all those guys. Which Pierce? 
uh, Alec, one already's gone. Alec so, Pierce, yeah. Damian right, Pierce, right, right. Went one spot before. Would he be on the board? Uh, not for me there. No. All right, I would. Then. I would take Isaiah Spiller. I know people are saying, well, you could probably trade Damian Pierce, but I'm gonna take the guy that I like more and and the player that I trust a little more, and uh, I'm gonna take Isaiah Spiller there. <laughs> Uh, but it was it, – I still don't really actually we, – we, we've been doing rankings for uh, Patreon, and, and I've been bouncing back and forth between – Good plug, good plug. Who to, who to put where in that just that little tier there with, with Spiller and, and McBride and Mechie and Pierce and tight end premium. So I ended up going Spiller there. I, I took the shot on the running back. I really liked the player. He was kind of hanging out there. Um, so. Listen – I hope you guys tune into all the other rounds. It took us a while. Casey's original dream was to make this whole thing take like an hour and everybody have two minutes per pick, but that's just not how we roll here. And we got in with all 11 dudes and we went basically between 40 to 40 minutes to an hour with everyone. So many people made an argument for their pick that could be applied to Spiller. Yeah. But they don't like Spiller. Uh, some people did. Uh, yeah, some love some, thrown some, towards Spiller. Some, some Spiller love. Uh, I feel like it was pretty diverse, and and everybody was there. Was a lot of it wasn't chalk. Right, it was for a, sure. a lot of love and a lot of and some hate on some guys. Which I don't even know good, what chalk is for this balance. Yeah. draft. This this year's rookie draft, but like Spiller has just as much opportunity as a lot of guys. Like Eckler could hold out. Eckler's old. Eckler gets hurt. They want to take some load off Eckler. They would like to preserve Eckler. Eckler needs some help. There's all these things working in Spiller's favor, not to mention the tape. Not the to mention tape, that I baby. think he's pretty good. Right. And I think he's only 20 or just turned 21. The tape, baby. And just kind of, you know, can do a little bit of everything. I think the receiving's perfectly fine. Um, and a pretty pretty solid running back. Take some, take some load off that. Fine and great. Um, I, they've been looking for him. They want they want a guy. And I mean, who? Well, there's not too many more offenses that you want a, an offensive player on. Um so right for a lot with of the young things, quarterback, you know, a lot with of the, the reasons young you just quarterback. listed, a lot of the reasons you just listed, um, and and some of what I just said about Spiller. And look, I mean, they got they got Eckler for cheap. You, you kind of talked about it, and and they're kind of getting into that zone where they're about to have to pay the quarterback, so some money's about to dry up. So Eckler should probably try to hold out. I'm not saying it will happen, but do it, Eckler. Get your money, man. You deserve it. Maybe they'll just give him a little raise and and keep everybody happy, and this will be all for naught. But uh, Regardless, I still like the player, and and Eckler right. hasn't been the healthiest of guys. And again, I mean, like, they I know it. I know people want to take Rashad White up there in the two one two two area. Like, I'm I'm going to be honest with you, I'm I'm probably just going to pass on White, trade back a couple picks, and take Spiller because I like the player better. And I don't see that much different in situation. If you switched the situation, except for some draft capital, if you put Rashad White with potentially Justin Herbert long term, then I can see you taking Rashad White, but you're banking on. On Tommy being there forever, I just I don't know. Like it doesn't yeah. make as much sense to me as Spiller does, especially that we liked. You know, we had Spiller as our RB three pre draft, and basically still there. I can't. You know, basically you, you should probably take Cook. I get it because if he does anything, you could definitely flip him for a huge profit, or mm -hmm. at least maybe you get a twenty three first out of James Cook if he shows something early on. You know, right. Which you're probably not going to want to. If he shows something, you're going to be like, oh, I want to keep him because he's banked on him. He took him. But, like, I, I get James Cook, so maybe I slide Spiller down to RB4 based on the bad yeah. draft capital. And I mean, but other most, than that. Most people are going to have White in four or five or three even. Um, so, which, you know, to each your own, just not – I'm not really getting it for me. I, I know the analytic community kind of likes uh, White and – uh, the the value seems to be pretty high on him right now, but I, I I'm I'm liking it because it's it's affording me better opportunities in that pushing other guys mid down second for sure. Round. Um, so I'm down with it. Keep doing it, and and maybe maybe it's no personal thing against White. I just don't see the situation being all that much different than than uh, in Tampa than in. L.A. So. Except the quarterback's age. Yeah, they're half. He's half the age. Two eight Spiller. All right, back on the clock at 2-9, we got David Wilsey. Go check him out on Twitter, at Wilsonator. That's with the number 8. Got it in there, and you got to check out his RB model. He's doing the Lord's work for RBs. Um, <laughs> what you got here, man? 2-9, it was James Cook, but a little bit of reluctancy there. So you staying on brand? What are you doing here? 
We're going to stay on brand and it's going to, I mean, it's going to kind of be a little more of the same. We're going to look for that situational upside. Terry and Davis price LSU didn't have the, um, we'll put it this way. He went where Clyde Edwards Hilaire should have went as far as draft capital wise. He didn't have the boost of the uh, best college offense ever to, you know, step on the field exist. Yeah. Um, and some of the best potential, you know, NFL players to ever step on the field combined on the same field, you know. So he, he didn't have the benefit of that. And to be clear, Clyde is a better prospect than Tyrion Davis Price. I, but I, I, I do believe he was overdrafted by about two rounds. But he landed where sixth round running backs can walk in and take over the job from whoever else is on the team you know so i mean they they took a third rounder last year took a sixth rounder sixth rounder outshine we never i mean there was rumors floating around that he might get cut yeah trey sermon might not even be on the team and i i mean i think he's gotten uh he's kind of gotten a little bit of the royce freeman treatment like um royce would have been good on another team like just philip Lindsay fit that scheme and the style that they they did i but like so trey sermon maybe he lands in another place where where they can find a way to utilize him a little bit better <laughs> or at all <laughs> or at all you know and but maybe it's injuries you know like could they be don't, they don't tell us everything or maybe you know? he's could, just an asshole i don't know <laughs> yeah 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 that's always <laughs> he, a possibility he was banged up like he, it was basically two games that got him up that high like he crushed it in the SEC championship and yeah. the national championship, like, or maybe it was the first no, he, playoff game. He left the national championship, didn't he? Oh, right, Clemson? he did. Yeah. He did. It was the he game, did. It was the SEC championship, and then the first playoff game, he just just did, went on a did tear. He, did he crush Northwestern for yep. like a ridiculous two hundred and fifty something yards or something like that? Yeah, and uh, yeah, I mean that, like, he's not a bad prospect, but that definitely was like the boost from day three to day two was that little stretch right there, man. And so this is, I guess, good in a way for Terry and Davis price. We know that if he goes in there and shows that he is the best fit and he's athletic, he's got more size than uh, Elijah Mitchell. Uh, Mitchell has been banged up a little bit already in the first year. So, and I, think I mean, we have put on some weight. This off season, a little bit. Mitchell did. Yeah, he said he, he said he was trying to and did a little bit. I don't know how that'll go. Already with with some knee concerns, so you don't. I don't think you like adding weight. Yeah, uh, <laughs> it's yeah. never a solution. The doctor's gonna tell you to take some <laughs> off for those knees. Yeah, man. So I guess we will see. I mean, I, we should be looking at it as he is the potential starter going in, and Terrian Davis Price could be a potential huge value mm -hmm. you know because like i said i'm reaching on him a little here at the two two nine um like him much more in the third kind of similar with the james cook he's an athlete in a great offense and an ambiguous backfield right. so yeah. you know i mean amongst a whole other class of a bunch of question marks I guess give me the guy in a Shanahan backfield that I know if he goes in there and shows that he is the better option, they're not going to just stick with the guy they took first or the guy they took last year that that did something last year. They're gonna they're gonna give him an opportunity to do it as well. So, what uh, what running back, if any, like there was only a few, so it would have been Zamir, which might have been from everybody else's point of view, probably a little bit of a reach. Pierce and Spiller. Any of those guys would have changed your pick if they were available? Uh, yeah, I probably would have taken Zamir pretty closely with TDP, but I, I would have taken Spiller prior. And then uh, who was who Damian was Pierce. the <laughs> I'd have just taken split. The other three are so similar to me. Yeah. As far as potential upside, I mean, you're looking at with Zamir, you have 
Yeah, uh, aligned to the job potentially. They didn't give Jacobs the fifth year option, and the I mean he could come in there, and there's not anybody else that you really say is like a solidified number two so much that they could just he doesn't have a chance. Right. But, but I mean, you like are Spiller the most out of all those guys. Is that what I'm getting or no? Out of Davis Price, Pierce, and White, and uh, yeah. All right. I like that. Yeah, no, nah, it's uh I mean they've been Chargers have been looking for a guy to to be that other half of the backfield for I mean they've drafted a guy for a few straight years <laughs> yeah. since Melvin's gone and I mean Spiller it's another situation like Kyron like except he did it in the SEC for three straight years. Yeah. You know, so yeah, maybe he's not the most athletic guy, but I mean, leaves he can't a crime be, scene. No. That's what, that's been our trademark for Spiller. Just leaving a crime scene of <laughs> would be tacklers in his wake. There you and go. Can also has plus receiving chops. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just as much receiving upside as as Hall. I mean, more than. I mean, just as much as probably Cook. You know, more yeah. than Walker. I mean, he he was until he ran. Man, he was everybody's one or two. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. so. People go a little crazy, and you do have to adjust. Like sure. it does affect his upside. Like sure. he, you know, he is slower than we we thought. Especially with, I mean, he was a you know a track athlete in in previous years and stuff. So and and, would, and Brees going the other way, you know, with yeah, testing really faster. well. Where as some people were saying, hey, no, it's Spiller as the one. Now basically after the combine, nobody could really even argue at that point. And didn't Spiller Spiller had like an abdominal strain or something? He had something that that was. I believe so. And, but well, but then like didn't he he when he did. That that's why he didn't, didn't work out either. So. Yeah, he didn't really. Still had that abdominal there, strain, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know. So they're pretty but, close uh, together. I don't know. I mean, I, God, it's such a a cluster of five, six names in like mm-hmm. tier. You know, like there's there's Brees and there's Walker, and yes, they are on different levels. But I mean, Walker's really if you're being totally risk averse. He's the only other guy besides Hall that I would say, like, yeah, you can push some chips in on him. But well, I'm push the chips in on Walker. I love yeah, that. We, we really let's, like let's, Walker. Let's do it. Let's and just, just push him I think in. he's getting kind of a bad rap now. I, I was thinking Twitter was going to like him more than the NFL, and then everybody got a hold of the receiving the, the target numbers, share. and it was like, boom, just straight downhill, man. And I, I got to the point where I was like, of success with that target share, people can't take it. They can't. They can't do it's, it. Yeah, no, it's limited. It's limited. I, I mean, I, I think he's skinnier AJ Dillon, pretty much. I mean, but AJ Dillon, the, the difference between the two is, like, Dillon was an efficient receiver in college, and mm-hmm. Walker was not. And through my research, you know, just through the model and everything like that, just a simple way to to view like how things will translate is just above average efficiency and below average efficiency for guys that don't have volume. It's, I mean, the, the difference is pretty stark on how they, uh, they translate at the next level. The efficient guys generally do considerably better. So, um, that was my main concern. It wasn't really the volume that, uh, it wasn't really the volume so much as like when he catches the ball can go back. when he catches the ball he's he's not really that efficient or you know i guess great in space with it and yeah some of that might be not being put in the best situation as far as like ball placement from the quarter, quarterback and everything like that but i mean just he's pretty considerably below average about I think it was like 30% below league average for the last like 17 years as far as just his yeah. yards per reception. So, all right. <sighs> all right so that was my kids. <laughs> all good, man. Yeah, all good. Totally understand. TDP at 2 9, I'm, I'm not mad at it. I don't even know if we talked about him that much, but uh, yes, that's okay. TDP at 2 9. All right, we're back with Jeff Bell for pick 210 when Olave and one at the, at the uh, 110 there. Uh, you can find him at the Debbie Royale. 
He's the lead dynasty guy with the uh, football guys and at four whom J Bell tells on Twitter. So who you got here at 210? It's a little bit of a juicy spot. Some stuff so I hanging around. Trey McBride. I took Trey McBride in this spot. And, uh, you know, it's a tight end premium league. And so that's kind of a factor. Um, but I, I really love the landing spot that he landed in. I think a lot of people are off on it because um, Zach Ertz being there and, and kind of seeing a guy there already. But um, kind of looking out, playing it out, you know, it, I think we got a little bit spoiled with Kyle Pitts production and with Pat Fryermuth's production in year one for the tight ends. And we kind of know that there's a little bit of a learning curve at the tight end position. Zach Ertz has an out after the next two years in his contract. Right. And so, yeah, you might be playing the a little bit of a longer game, but Trey McBride is easily tied to one in this class. And so you're able to take him in that 210. I'd take him much earlier, to be honest with you. I was going to be a follow up for me. Yeah, yeah, I take him closer with to this pick is is how yeah. much how many guys have to be there for you to not take McBride. I've got him closer to the early to mid second, and so yeah. getting him at the two ten, I'm pretty thrilled with that. And I think I've seen a fair amount of drop off in the mid second in all the drafts that I've done. And yeah, so the two ten is around kinda, for some reason. Yeah, I'm grabbing him all the time. If I'm, you know, I'm kind of in that mid second round range and he's available. It's a, a pick that I'm willing to make because I'm just not I I can see long term, you know, long term, assuming Kyler Murley doesn't quit and go play baseball, you know, right. he's going to be in a, right. a great offense long term. He's well, going to be able to grow how productive Ertz was as soon as he came in, as soon as he stepped in, right. you know, and I'm not saying that McBride is Ertz. I mean, I had a chance at McBride uh two or three picks before you. And that was, it was McBride Pierce or Mechie. And I just, I wanted to take Spiller cause I like Spiller and that's kind of my guy. Um, uh, as far as when we get further back here and I'm sure I'll have plenty of time to talk about him. Uh, but no, I, I agree, man. It's nobody, nobody wants to wait for anything in dynasty, but this is, there's a good talent there and, and could really be something that's, that's awesome in the future. And who knows? I mean, shit, anything could happen, man. I mean, we've seen everybody's like, you hate the landing spot. You hate this. You hate that. It's going to be two years. I mean, all of a sudden, Zach Ertz is out week six and, and McBride's in there uh, getting some love. So, you know, I think I think he's kind of a guy that that if he once he starts dropping, that, that'd be somebody that I would I would might try to finagle my way into a little trade in and then just stash him on a deeper roster. Like we play a lot of FFPC shorter roster and I saw him kind of getting pushed down a good bit. And in that point, I can understand you roster 20 guys um, and for the most part. And a guy who isn't productive immediately is pretty hard to hold on, you know, year to year. But, you know, typically I'm playing 30 man or more roster in Dynasty. Uh, so Preferred. at that point, I have no problem taking uh, McBride way at the beginning of that first round, like you were kind of saying. Way at the yeah, beginning? Like, would you would you take him over the two quarterbacks, Jeff? The, the other two, I have done that in tight end premium. Um, I do a lot of the safe leagues. And so those are two point tight end premiums for two mm-hmm. point for uh, tight ends. And so I've taken him over the other two quarterbacks in those leagues. In Superflex. Um, in super flex. Yes. Um, it, you know, it's one of those that I think capital uh, concerns me a little bit on the other two quarterbacks. We don't ever know that they're going to get a real opportunity to be the quarterback there. Right. Whereas, um, you know, if, if McBride shows glimpses of production and like you mentioned, Ertz misses some time, some of it's playing market value too, because um, you kind of want to step into assets that are going to ascend in value potentially. Mm-hmm. And, you know, if we see that McBride acclimates well, and then we see Zach Ertz out, you know, that, he's going to that Trey McBride is going to have that moment on dynasty Twitter because we, that's mm-hmm. how it just works. And yeah. everybody's going to be talking about the Trey McBride game coming up. And so that presents an opportunity where, you know, you don't even need it. You just see that, that little bit of being good and you can step in and, and flip this for something else, especially getting him at the late second or mid second. So yeah. um, I think it's, I, like uh, that. I, I really like that pick there. Yeah, I mean, and you already got Nuke, who's going to miss some games off the rip now. Obviously, they traded for Hollywood, and there's some Kyler Hollywood connection going on there. But, I mean, you could see right away where, you know, they're, maybe they run a little bit of 12 
just missing Nuke, getting a bigger presence, some 50-50 action. And, you know, McBride can move, caught a lot of balls, 90 balls, highly productive. You can you can kind of move them all over the place, outside, inside, in line, kind of do it all for you. So uh, maybe maybe you even get a little McBride shine in the beginning of the season if, if he says, like you said, he acclimates well and, and gets a little camp love and, hey, hey, he's got it. He understands what's going on. Let's put him out there, see what we got. So I love it. All right, so we're back with Matt Hicks at 2-11. Um, we got, what, what's the Twitter handle, Jay Wayne? Hit me with it. At the FF underscore educator. He's the FF educator. Check got him it. out. Search for the rookie big board. Find that all over the place. Appreciate you joining us, Matt. All right, 2-11. Who you got? I, I don't know. You might have to uh, put me behind bars for this one because this feels like theft. John Mechie at 211? Yeah. What are we doing here? I don't know. I'm going to get John Mechie at 203. I'm taking him at 204. And I got to tell you, you know, there are certain players that just kind of check the boxes. You know, John Mechie for me was good, good, good through the process, right? Maybe not as exciting as some of these other guys. Uh, but certainly still an explosive prospect, somebody with a lot of speed. Listen, I know we're coming off of the injury, but it's an, uh, you know, it's not as late of an injury as Jameson Williams suffered, right? But then I think you it was like that. a week earlier. I think they're pretty. I think I think it was like bang bang for Alabama. If I'm remembering, I, I feel like it was like just post Thanksgiving, but I, I could be wrong on that. And I feel like. Uh, Jamison Williams was semifinals, but I don't know, yeah. man. I'll tell you what, six months ago kind of feels like three years ago, so yeah. I could be wrong <laughs> yeah, about yeah. that. Um, but, man, you look at that landing spot in Houston, Yeah, I like it a ton, right? Right. Because, you know, I, I like to think a little bit long-term with these projections as well, but even thinking in the short term, I mean, you could plug Mechie in for near 100 targets. with uh, You know, if he's coming back and if he's healthy, I think he has the opportunity to be six, seven targets a game. Yeah. Uh, and stretch the field, have a good eight out there. I think he can be the touchdown target. Certainly got Cooks there, but I think Mechie can find the end zone five times sure. in his rookie season. And then here's what I'm loving. Houston's picking in the top five again next year, folks. Like, right. he's, you know, uh, Davis Mills is fine. If you want to use him as a bridge quarterback, you want to add him to your team, you know, your super flex roster, that's fine. But Houston's picking right back up at the top next year. And we're looking at, in two years, pairing John Mechie with Bryce Young, C.J. Stroud, right? One of these top quarterbacks in next year's class. And all of a sudden, then you now have an explosive young wide receiver paired with one of the you know most premier coveted young quarterbacks in the league. That's a good combination. So if you're thinking a couple years out and you can get John Mechie at 211, I love it. Yeah. yeah, let me correct myself. I I, I do love that pick, uh, and I'm I, and I like him where you would even take him earlier in that second round. Uh, he he tore his ACL December fifth as well, so it was a month before, right after Thanksgiving, like he said. So he's he's like a month ahead of Jameson Williams. Yeah, these are the things plug in my brain, man. That, like, I can't remember to do the chores around the house, but yeah, I, I know there was a month in between those injuries. <laughs> <laughs> I feel you. No, I which I, isn't we, that much of, of of time. I mean, in the long scheme of things, I don't think. But it's a much you know that that that, that injury is kind of built into his price here, and the fact that right. you know what well, I've I, not th- been getting any respect like the whole process. I, I think that injury is the only reason his price. Like he's forgotten. I like I don't really yeah. I don't understand why there's so much dislike for for Mechie and how he keeps getting pushed all the way down to the end of the second here uh, because we. We, we've talked about it multiple times. He just he did all the the kind of dirty work for Alabama this year. Like Jamison was getting all the love and the praise, and and you know well deserved. Um, but Mechie was always that guy when you know when Devonta was there, it was like oh Mechie's up next, and and Waddle and uh, who was the other guy there before them? It was like Mechie was always kind of around, thinking he'd be the next guy in line. It was finally his time, and then Jamison Williams shows up. And kind of blew it out of the water, but I mean, I think Mechie had 90 catches. Some, some, you know, a lot of just did all, yeah. all of the dirty work seemingly for them. And watching other players from Alabama's tape, you see Mechie just, you know, steadily just doing his thing. So I mean, I, I, I love, I do like the landing spot. I do like the player. So I, I agree with you. I love these these first two picks are right on brand for me as well. Um, so. No, no thought of Alec Pierce there. He would have been the other receiver, probably left or that. Wandale. That maybe everybody would have been uh, gushing over. Yeah, I'm a big Alec Pierce fan. I've certainly gotten a good level of exposure to him. I've, you know, I usually feel comfortable taking Alec Pierce around, 
you know, 206, 209. Uh, and I'll take Mechie 202 to 204. So just Mechie a little bit higher. But I like Alec Pierce a ton in that Indianapolis offense. Contested catch guy, great athleticism, you know, can stretch the field. I think folks are sleeping on Alec Pierce's straight line acceleration. Uh, and I think that's just going to be a really fun offense there. Yeah. You know, you look at what my, Matt Ryan has to work with. Pittman on the other side. He uh, can put Pierce. balls anywhere he wants, too. <laughs> that's what I've heard. That's what I've heard. Poor choice of words. Uh, <laughs> so certainly interest there. Uh, I know you threw out Wandale. Zero interest in Wandale Robinson. Zero? Uh, zero interest. Uh, listen, I, I, I kind of – well, I, here's a two-parter. There's, there's the analyst in me that is uh, very afraid of the manufactured touches. That's a big no for me for prospects, especially rookie wide receiver prospects. If they relied on heavy manufactured targets at the college level, they're just folks I'm going to avoid, right? Because you're just not going to get that level of manufactured production and targets. I mean, even look at somebody like Rondale Moore. I faded him based on his manufactured uh, production last year, and he caught you know 70-something percent of his balls in his first year, something along those lines. But mm-hmm. I think his end dot was you know, basically at the line of right. scrimmage. And if you don't get those touchdowns, it's just going to be really limited. And then here's the non-analyst side of it for me. I'm a Giants fan. <laughs> I want zero part of that offense. It's a broken offense. I don't think they know what they want to do with Wondell Robinson. Why is Kadarius Tony still on the team if Wondell Robinson's there? And Daniel Jones uh, scares me every time he drops back. So I want zero piece Warranted of Wondell Robinson at this point. Um, yeah. so if, if okay, let's move. Let's let's play the hypothetical. Let's move Mechie up to the front of the round here. And would would you take uh, Rashad White or or Mechie? That that uh, those two guys will fall in the same tier for me. So at that point, when you're in the same tier, I'm willing to go based on positional need. So I, I would say that comes down to roster construction. I am willing to take Rashad White in that range. I like Rashad White. I think folks. Uh, I think well. Let me let me phrase it this way. I think I have a different perspective for the way he's going to be used in that offense than some other folks. Um, you look at Leonard Fournette and you look at the way Tampa Bay has used him. There, I think they want to hold him, right? They want to work his his early season usage, keep it low, and let him build up to that late season usage and get him ready for the playoffs, right? I mean, Tampa Bay is not playing a 17 game season. In their minds, they're playing a 2021 game season. So. I think they're going to want to use Rashad White early in the season. But more importantly, I I have compared Rashad White's role to what I think uh, James White did in New England. I think that's the role Rashad White can play early in his career. And having that target, uh, that, that target volume is going to be a really positive thing for Rashad White. And so at 202, I think that that's the right risk point for him. Okay. Um, well, we'll do one more. Um, is there is there any any chance that you would take any of these quarterbacks if they were still left if on the board at two eleven? Like let's just say Ritter and Willis, because obviously you had a shot at Corral. Yeah, I would take Willis at two eleven for sure. I think you know for me, I'm such an advocate. I really boost the value of quarterbacks. I only play in superflex leagues, uh, and so for me in superflex rankings, I do. I really boost the quarterbacks because if you hit, man, you're gonna hit. Yeah. And I think Malik Willis is actually, you know, certainly the draft capital is not what we wanted. Nobody's going to pretend and try to sure. spin that one. But if you look at the situation, it's not terrible. You know, Malik Willis was not going to see the field his rookie year. That was right. not an expectation that I think folks realistically looking at him had. And I think it actually would have been worse for him if he was in a situation where we expected him to play in his rookie year, right? If he was forced into that action. So I think with Malik Willis, we have an opportunity for him to redshirt. Uh, a clear uh, contract opportunity with Ryan Tannehill after this season for Willis to take the reins of this offense. So there's some upside there, certainly. And at 211, I mean, absolutely worth it at that price point. I'm not a Desmond Ritter fan. Uh, quite frankly, we'd probably have to get to the 311 before I really start <laughs> thinking about Desmond Ritter. And I know he won't be on the board then. Yeah. All right. Where where would be would it be two six two seven when you started talking about Willis or was it just strictly that back three or four picks? I think you can think about him early second round. I know that's not his ADP. You know you always want to look at where he's going and what right. you think your league mates will do. But 
Man, if you're looking for some quarterback depth at 202, 203, I'm not opposed to it. I'm really not. Yeah, FFPC, uh, super flex, tri flex leagues that we play in. He he definitely. I don't think he got past two three, two four. Uh, yeah. So, you know, I uh, think that kind of for what that is, and and I, you know, I'm kind of with you on that one. I'm not going to be just completely out because of the third round draft capital. I, I I like the player. I like the ability. You know, if he, th- there's plenty of opportunity to get on the field next year which i mean we pretty much thought none of these quarterbacks would really see the field and you know maybe we we might see kenny pickett but i think that was the general consensus kind of going in is they all kind of need a year um right so uh malik gets it i like that you said it's probably even better for him in, in that regard so uh, agree there so john mechie uh 211 man I, I i love i love where we're at these these first couple picks all right so we got our guy wrapping up the end here, Derek Brown, Debro at Debro underscore FFB, Fantasy Pros Guru. How you doing, man? Back for two twelve. What's the? Uh, <laughs> feels like you got another gift here at the end of the round. What, what, what's the selection at two twelve? I mean, what can I say? The the this is a guy I would have taken at the very beginning of the second round. So to get him gifted, going falling all the way to two twelve. I mean, we got a sharp room here, but I got a. They say didn't like make it very maybe hard on you. Yeah. No, I mean, like, I feel like maybe some people fell asleep at the wheel. Yeah. Like, I I love Alec Pierce, so yeah. I had to go with him. Obviously, he's one of my guys. I talked about it when we we chopped it up before. Sure. I would take him as soon as like two o two, two o four, somewhere in that range. Mm-hmm. I think that there's holes in his profile. Absolutely, there's holes in his game right now. Mm-hmm. But can we? Can we say that there is not a really high ceiling with him as well? I mean, you've got a, he checks a lot of different boxes. Sure. I mean, we know the athletic measurables, and but also that like he's got an early breakout age. Will we we look and we correlate high to hitting at the next level, and then the third one he's got immediate opportunity. Like, yeah, who's going to take outside snaps away from him in the Colts offense? Yeah, I mean, what Ashton Doolin? Yeah. yeah. Strakhan, like, no, it's just not happening. Like, and so I, I think too, you have strong oh, yeah. capital. I mean, a second round wide receiver at the back end of the second round. I mean, uh, got an upgraded quarterback. Sure. Haven't seen that. Haven't, you know. I'll take the gift wrap. I mean, that that's totally fine over a few different guys. I mean, David Bell, I know the steam is heavy and hot and everything like that. I'm surprised that, um, I mean, y'all know I'm not a huge, huge proponent of, but like Zamir White going before Alec Pierce, a few other guys that I'm like just looking. Freaking John Mechie going before Alec Pierce? No, 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 no. Oh, don't I, like that. No, 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 no. He I said, will take Alec Pierce handily. He said, Matt Hicks death match now. <laughs> I love Matt to death. I love Matt to death. But Lord, I'd get on here and fight him about taking John Mechie over Alec Pierce. Uh, all right. So, I mean, it hadn't made it too hard on you. I don't really have too many follow-up questions. How many times do you say hard on? <laughs> uh, so, 212, Alec Pierce. I knew I knew that was an easy one for you as well as Christian Watson. So. I like it. We made it through. Round two, baby. We did it. Make sure you subscribe, like, comment. Tell us who, whose pick you liked, whose pick you didn't like. Make sure you stay tuned. We're gonna come, we're gonna come back for round three, round four. We stuck with everybody. We got a recap. We're gonna come out with another video about that. Just slinging content at your face. Thank you for waiting on us, YouTube. It's- fucking algorithm man you got to hit us with that like the comment it really greatly helps us out and if you're listening on the podcast please go hit that five star review on the spotify's or the itunes and if you want to cap this dope t-shirt go over to the revelrybrewingco.com and then hit up that shop i'll put a link up there's a link in the description links all down there for your pleasure they uh, soft as hell too oh, they're so soft mm. just it's like just, my leather they're <laughs> this is not a fifteen dollar T shirt, you know what I'm saying? Like this is a twenty five dollar T shirt, so like you got to pay a little bit more for the comfort. I've been wearing this thing for like five years. It still looks good. Still looks good. Not as good as that sign though. Shout out to Big D. Love you, buddy. Peace. <laughs>